Thank, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I rise today to introduce a very simple piece of legislation to repeal the infamous Section 1021 of the National Defense Authorization Act, quietly signed into law by the President on New Year's Day. What a way to usher in the new year. Yes, that is Ron Paul on the House floor on this Wednesday, January 18, 2012. He left the campaign trail just days ahead of the South Carolina primary to do something even more important, fight for our liberties, introducing a bill to repeal the 1021 provision of the NDAA National Authorization Act which allowed for the indefinite detention of even American citizens, all without trial, without due process, all of it. Kurt Nemo has the article. He describes that Ron Paul has serious reservations despite Obama's issuing a signing statement declaring he will not use the law to detain Americans. You mean the signing statement that is not only repugnant to the Constitution in its attempt to skirt the law he signed, but it, which is also not legally binding and gives false assurances? That signing statement, the double whammy deception? Yeah, Paul said in December in an interview that the bill will accelerate the country's slip into tyranny and virtually assures our descent into totalitarianism. In his floor speech, he also quoted Lindsey Graham talking about how you want a lawyer, you don't get a lawyer, you shut up, and how repugnant that is to the Constitution. Someone who took an oath to uphold it. That's breaking Ron Paul news. Of course, he also left the campaign trail to vote against the debt ceiling. Now, uh, coming up, we have two guests. Uh, that's Ted Anderson with GCN Live, uh, owner of the network. He's going to talk about the spike in gold price of the Ron Paul campaign. We also have Kay Beach of Axiom for Liberty to talk about the Ron Paul delegate process and how important that is. Uh, but first, we have more video from Alex highlighting the incredible importance of introducing a bill to repeal what is just a constitutional destroying Bill of Rights nullifying uh, act that's been written into so-called law. There is a fight taking place, not just here in the United States, but worldwide, between special interest mega corporations that buy and sell our politicians who want to bring in a worldwide corporate tyranny and against free populations across this globe. And the United States, that's always been an example of liberty and freedom to the world, is now an example of corruption, torture, and secret arrest. Now, as you know, Congress passed in December and Obama signed on December 31st, 2011, the National Defense Authorization Act that allows the secret arrest of U.S. citizens, the secret torture. You can disappear forever. And people say, well, where's Bob? Well, where's Carol? We don't know. Maybe they disappeared. You better keep your mouth shut or you'll disappear. Even the worst dictatorships in modern history don't put this type of evil on paper. And now Mitt Romney's come out and said he agrees with it. And they try to spin it that it's, quote, for terrorists, but the legislation says it's for U.S. citizens. Well, Ron Paul is striking back today. He took time off the campaign trail where he's a strong second now nationwide, even with the traitor establishment dinosaur prostitute media saying he can't win. He's swimming upstream like a salmon uh, against their lies, showing how the dinosaur media is losing more and more of his credibility with the public. And he went back to Congress and introduced legislation to repeal the draconian provisions of the National Defense Authorization Act, the secret arrest and disappearance of citizens, the worldwide declaration of war without Congress, uh, the end of posse commentatus. He has got a piece of legislation that stands against that. And the headline on InfoWars.com is, Ron Paul introduces legislation to strike NDAA's unconstitutional sections. This is so important to get this out to everybody. The fact that both parties and all the other candidates, Obama and the other four Republicans, totally support this and are competing with each other to promote war shows the dangerous straits that this country is in. And they've got a lot of other scary legislation like the SOPA legislation introduced that is an admitted selective internet kill switch without due process. Something good has come out of all this bad though. With the SOPA and the IP Act and the NDAA and all of this and TSA now at checkpoints on the highway and naked body scanners at the shopping malls and in New York on the streets, 
It's really waking people up. Folks, I wish this stuff wasn't true. But I discovered this plan to militarize the police and use the military against us 14, 15 years ago when I was kind of a mainline libertarian Ron Paul type talk show host. And people said, oh man, I talk about wild stuff over the years. It's because wild stuff is going on. And I saw it being developed behind the scenes. Now it's coming out in the open because the worldwide economy is being imploded by design. Before I cover some of this news, one other issue. You know, uh, 80 plus percent of the oil that's developed in Alaska by federal law is shipped out to Asia. We don't get it. Uh, but some deals were struck with Canada to start shipping oil in a pipeline through Illinois down to Texas. Oil we need. And Obama uh, signed an order today saying that's canceled. Not even letting free market bring us oil and, and lower our uh, dependency on the Middle East. It's the globalists. They want to destroy our economy. They want a post-industrial world. They're not just destroying our Bill of Rights and Constitution. It's monopoly men. They want to consolidate power. Now, let me uh, show you uh, some of these uh, articles here, some of these uh, top stories. Uh, here is one uh, right here. For whatever reason, my camera is not focusing, but um, you can see it right there. Ron Paul introduces uh, legislation to strike NDAA's unconstitutional sections. And again, there it is uh, right there on the site. There's other incredible news where AMA uh, Journal is talking about making participation in vaccine trials uh, mandatory. Uh, there's all of that, but let me show you what's going on uh, over at the Drudge Report. If you go to the Drudge Report, he's linked, drudgereport.com, he's linked to two of our articles. Uh, NYC moves to deploy body scanners on street in search for guns. And then there's another one here where the TSA had said they were going to test their employees for radiation, but now they say uh, that they're not going to do this. This is part of a long-term pattern uh, that they have engaged in over and over again where they say, we're going to stop groping people under 12. And then they keep doing it. Or we don't have any radiation coming out of our scanners. Why, John Hopkins says that there is no radiation. And it turns out, of course, there is, and they're lying. It's all part of their deception. But this is just some of the news that we're tracking, some of the things that are developing. It's all at Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.tv. Please get this out to everybody and support Ron Paul in trying to repeal the unconstitutional, constitution-killing provisions of the NDAA. Support Congressman Ron Paul, even if you don't support him for president. For heaven's sakes, support him in trying to restore the Constitution. We'll be covering it more on the radio tomorrow, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. I'll also be on Coast to Coast AM with George Norrie tonight covering NDAA. This is the future of the free internet. The internet as we know it, if we don't stop the SOPA, PIPA, and all the other related piracy and copyright legislations. Uh, think about the info war. I mean the long info war. And take this opportunity. Don't waste it. We either use the freedom we have on the internet or we're going to lose it. We have a brief window of time to resecure our liberty and fight back this police state. Now, throughout history, it's always been an info war. We had the Dark Ages, and before that, overt slavery. The whole rise of written language was from the get-go an information war because knowledge is power. It was confined to the priests and, and uh, royalty classes, and the people did not even have literacy. Now, here today in the 21st century, most of us in the Western world still have that gift of literacy, and for a very small window of time left, we also have the freedom of the Internet. How are we going to use it? Are we going to join together? As you probably know, many websites, including Wikipedia, including Google, and hundreds of other websites blacked out today in protest of this legislation targeting online freedom giving governments the ability to shut down websites on a whim in a Chinese-style security police state. So just think about that and look at the police state they've built for our future and how they've already declared America and the whole world as a battlefield against the people. And ask yourself, what are you going to do about the Internet? Now, in particular, uh, this kind of legislation would target 
all the independent alternative news websites. And Mike Adams at Natural News has written about this. SOPA and PIPA bills could threaten natural health websites with government-ordered shutdown. And he gets into all the details of how specifically the dissent at Natural News against vitamin C policies and, and papers saying that natural sunlight's dangerous, along with everything else against the chemicals, the vaccines, and the rest of it would make it an automatic target uh, for the government to shut down. In addition, the Drudge Report this website, Infowars.com, Lou Rockwell's website, you name it, user-driven websites like Reddit, all of them would come under fire, and places like Wikipedia and Google would have even less autonomy if the government got its hands on this bill the way it wants to. Now, they've shelved the SOPA bill, but they still have the PIPA bill, and they're going to bring back to life uh, the Stop Online Piracy Act that so many people on the web already protested against. They went after the sponsors of the bill, including GoDaddy, and had a big victory there, but it's not over. Paul Joseph Watson writes about the secret behind SOPA, and that is, in short, it's an effort to reinstate, to, to model on Communist China's internet censorship clampdown. And we have a clip here from Joe Lieberman talking about how great this would be. In, in catastrophic cases, not going to do it every day, not going to take it over. So I, I say to my friends on the Internet, relax. Right now, China, the government, can disconnect parts of its Internet in the case of war. We need to have that here, too. Now, you also have the former Senator Chris Dodd, who, once he left the Senate, immediately became president of the Motion Picture Association. He, too, has lobbied heavily for SOPA and PIPA. He also said the bill was modeled on China and their firewall, their great firewall against the world. And uh, Paul Watson just goes on to discuss how they're going to seize websites for whatever pretext they want, and you'll have virtually no recourse under the, the drafts of these bills. And what's likely to come out. Furthermore, they are pushing for a national strategy for trusted identities in cyberspace. It's going to be a big uh, a keychain for all your access on the web. It'll be tied to all your personal information, your tax records, all of it, your, your web history and the whole deal. And that is where this is aimed. We've already seen what happens in China. And if you don't want that here, like I said, you better think strongly about what this info war is all about. It really is an information war, and we're in a special time. We really are. Now, meanwhile, there's even more grotesque moves in New York City to deploy body scanners on the street in an effort to search for illegal guns. Kurt Nemo's article describes how the New York Police Commissioner Ray Kelly uh, is looking to deploy terahertz imaging detection scanners on the streets uh, to see if you supposedly have an illegal gun, uh, never mind the Second Amendment, which says nothing shall bar no legislation shall go against having a gun, uh, he says it would only be used in, quote, reasonably suspicious circumstances, although the, uh, the predating alternative to this is the stop and frisk, which are already considered against the Fourth Amendment. So how does looking under people's clothes with a wave scanner uh, somehow okay to do? I don't know. That's another question. The ACLU and other civil rights groups have already flagged this and called it a virtual pat down by the police department. But, of course, they'll push forward and make you believe guns are illegal and all of it. Meanwhile, the TSA, where body scanners have been used for years, uh, says it's not planning to actually test employees in regards to radiation, even though they've had all kinds of studies, the John Hopkins studies, all kinds of doctors come forward saying this stuff is dangerous. They even had a study back in 1998 showing that many of these types of body scanners could be causing